This ministry is made possible by the faithful support of viewers like you. And so... This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Welcome to church, and it's a beautiful, wonderful opportunity that we have to gather around the world through this medium called Facebook Live, and now we put it on YouTube, and we have lots of different platforms for you to be able to communicate and, and to connect with us, because we're right. really, really excited and thankful to God for the privilege and the opportunity we had to be able to reach people with the good news of Jesus so that we can be grateful. Exactly. And this is week four. This is the final week in our series. You're going to be delivering your last sermon on, well, not forever on grateful. No, 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 no. We should be talking about being thank, you know, thankful and grateful all the time. But exactly. this is November. So that's why it was so important to do this, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, well, because in the United States, we celebrate Thanksgiving exactly. in the month of November. That's exactly right. And, you know, this last week, we want to talk a little bit about self-examination and meditation actually maybe you can talk just really briefly the difference meditation and prayer well i'll tell you what i'll talk about that a little bit in my sermon perfect but for right now just say that that prayer is us talking to god and meditation is us listening to god and i think to be to be grateful we have to learn to listen and we have to learn to let go of things that aren't making us happy and embrace more things that good are. idea great Hey, God bless you. Though innocent, Jesus received a death sentence. A part of God's plan. It was done to provide a way for us to be redeemed and restored to fellowship with Him, even though we do not deserve it. We are not innocent, and we deserve a death sentence, but Jesus paid the price for us. It is as if we are on trial. The jury comes in with a guilty verdict. The judge sentences us to death. And then a man walks into the courtroom and says, Wait! I will die in the person's place. Let him or her go free. You are released. And Jesus is taken away to die in our place. What a gift! It is one that must not be taken lightly or without eternal gratitude. Praise God! Praise God for His indescribable gift, His Son, Jesus Christ. For more, go to drshuler.org. Now let us come to God in prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, as I stand here and I listen to the birds, I hear the geese flying overhead and I hear these beautiful birds in the tree. I am so thankful. As I touch this amazing tree, I'm reminded that you've created it all. All we have to do is open our eyes and look around us, and there's always something to be grateful for, Lord. Thank you for creating in us a grateful heart, a heart that is overflowing with thanksgiving during this Thanksgiving time in our lives here in the United States. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Amen. Thank you for being a part of Vital Living Sunday this week with Robert and Donna Schuler. Our ministry is made possible by the faithful support of people like you from around the world who join together to help spread this positive message of God's love. Would you consider partnering with us? It could make a world of difference. I hope you're having a fabulous Thanksgiving weekend. There's nothing better than being able to get with family and 
I guess overindulge a little bit, eat a little too much turkey or a little too much pecan or pumpkin pie and just enjoy the, the, the reality that we have an opportunity to thank God for everything. And in fact, that's what I want to talk to you about today is giving thanks in for, to God for everything. Because God loves you, God cares about you, God wants you to have the desires of your heart. He wants you to be able to, to realize the goodness and the, and the wonder of his presence in your life. <laughs> and, and it begins with us coming, coming to him in prayer and asking. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. <laughs> and today I have another passage of scripture I'm going to read to you. It's Philippians 4, uh, 4 through 7, I believe is the numbers. But in this passage that I'm going to be reading in a minute, it talks about a, a bunch of different stuff. And, and we'll get into some of it because on this Thanksgiving weekend, we have to remember to give thanks to God for everything. And not until we can are our hearts going to be healed. What I mean by that, uh, we look at some of the terrible things that have happened to us. And you say, you want me to give thanks to God for that? <laughs> and until you do, you the... The, the rot continues to grow and the affection continues to fester. And not until you can surrender that to God and realize that those horrible things that happen to you happen to you for a reason and are in the process of making you into the person that God wants you to be. It is part of God's divine design just for you. <laughs> it's a hard lesson to learn. But not until we are able to give thanks to God for those things have we really healed. It takes time. I'm not saying that, hey, if something happened to you last week and you're still really ticked off about it, that it's time to give thanks to God. But there'll come a time where you need to, where you have to. Otherwise, it will just tear you, in, tear you up from the inside out. And the spiritual reality is that from a physical standpoint, we may not understand it at all. It may not make any sense to us. But we aren't physical people with spiritual experiences. The fact of the matter is we're spiritual people with, on a physical journey. That as we go through life, we realize that life is nothing more than a blip in a, in a nanosecond of the, of the measure of time. If we're lucky, we live to be 100 years or, or maybe 105 or if you're one of the very, very, very lucky, 110 or 100. I think the longest person to live in the last century is what, 115, 120 maybe? No matter what it is, it's still nothing more than a blip in time. And when we come to the realization that, that life is more, far more, than just coming to the realization that, uh, that, that we have to have the things that we want, that we're not in, allowed to, uh, to suffer pain, that God won't permit us to go through tough times? Let me read to you our scripture today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. St. Paul wants to remind you. Let me say it again. Re Rejoice. <laughs> Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, I think we've said a lot in that passage. Paul says a lot in that passage. We read a lot in that passage. There's a lot to understand. Let your gentleness be made known to all. You know, one of the, one of the interesting words that I've, I've come to appreciate is the word sonder. You know, we... So, you, you saunder through a park, it's, or, or meander would be a good synonym to saunder. 
But the reason I use the word sonder is because of its historical significance. According to Catholic Catechism, uh, according to Catholicism.org, uh, it that literally means, I guess the Latin would be Santa Terra or Holy Land. And it came actually from, from the French, the, the French to, to saunter, uh, referring to those who are on their way to the Holy Land. And for us, as we go through a journey of life, if we think of it as a race that we have to get through, you're not going to get through. If you think of it as a journey that you have to participate in, that's full of twists and turns, it's full of ups and downs, it's full of dangers and, and, and hopes and frustrations and excitement, things you didn't expect and anticipate, you saunder through life. And the world becomes a holy land, a place from God, a place from which we experience the fullness of God. But the key is to give thanks in everything, to rejoice in all things. Rejoice, let me say it again, rejoice. It's easier said than actually done, isn't it? But for us to come to a realization that, that God loves us is a key. That life is for us to saunder through. It, that we are here to be able to have a relationship with God. We have a relationship with Him through prayer and meditation. Prayer is where we come before Him and we recognize who He is and we let Him know who He is. We talk to Him. We share with Him our desires and our wants. We let our petitions be made known to Him that Lord, here's what I need. Lord, here's what I want. Lord, here's where I wish to go. And as I was raised as a young man, we always end our prayers, not my will, but thine be done. And I think we have to realize that we worship a sovereign God. We worship a God who created the heavens and the earth. We worship a God who, who is the giver and sustainer of life, this very breath, this very moment. He is a great, a good, a wonderful and gracious God who loves you. And we are his children. And as his children, we have been challenged by him to come and in all things to give thanks. You know, here on this Thanksgiving, I look around and I say, wow, what I have to be thankful for. <laughs> I don't have a lot of money. I don't have new cars. I don't have a lot of things in life that people think are, are important to maintaining and experience happiness. But I look around and my kids are fantastic. My grandkids are better. My, my, my relationship with my wife is, is wonderful. My, my friendships abound. And today, I come to you and I say that's not based upon what I've done, but what I've been. <laughs> and that is, I've been a faithful father and a faithful husband. I've been a faithful uh, person who believes in the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have relied upon God to guide and to lead. I come before God on a regular basis, all the time, 24 seven in prayer. You say, how, how can that be? You, 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 your knees must be worn out. I don't say, I'm, I don't kneel and pray, but I'm in a position of prayer. A position of prayer meaning I'm constantly in communication with God because it's prayer and meditation. Prayer is when we let our petitions be made note to nod. We recognize who God is. We give him thanks. We, we, we continue to talk to God. And meditation is where we saunter, where we saunter through life. And we recognize that we are on this journey. And we listen to God. 
and we watch his guidance <laughs> and we uh, allow him to be uh, Lord of our life <laughs> and the guide of our path. That's to saunter through, through life, to meander through life, to, to find our way to the Holy Land. And so I want to conclude by saying that the 90 day challenge is real. That the 90 day challenge, which we started at the beginning of this month and are basically concluding today. And the fact is, well, it'll go on forever. I'm just not going to talk about it again. It's only in the month of November that I talk about giving. Uh, and so we started with tithing, giving 10%. We continued with, with the New Testament version of tithing, which is a measure of your faith. What, what measure you give, it shall be given back to you. We continued with, with the understanding, is God faithful to his word? If he says this is going to really happen, <laughs> and then today it's we give thanks to God in all things and in all ways and letting our petitions be made known to him. And so we saunter through life with the realization and the understanding that God loves us, that he cares for us, that we will rejoice again. I will say it again, rejoice in all things, <laughs> that we will give thanksgiving and allow thanksgiving to, to flow through our hearts. And if you may be going through tough times, and I, and I know people are going through tough times all the time, we have to stop and look at what we do have, not at what we've lost. Because God loves you, God cares for you, God is guiding you, and God is leading you. He'll bring you peace, He'll bring you joy, He'll bring you wholeness. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. No matter where you are in the world, you can be a part of this dynamic faith community. Go online to drshuler.org today and download our community app. There you can request prayer and pray for others. Receive positive, encouraging content from Dr. Schuler and more.